The CDC is going to be holding an emergency meeting next week to talk about higher than expected cases of heart inflammation in 16 to 24 year olds following doses of Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. Scientists had been expecting somewhere between 10 and 102 cases of the rare disease and so far have received 275. Joining us right now is Dr. Scott Gottlieb. He's former FDA commissioner and a CNBC contributor. He also serves on the boards of both Pfizer and Illumina. His new book, Uncontrolled Spread, Why COVID-19 Crushed Us and How We Can Defeat the Next Pandemic, is out in September. Dr. Gottlieb, this is a pretty concerning report. What do you think of it? Look, it's definitely a signal, and it needs to be um, investigated by the FDA and the CDC. At this point, there does seem to be uh, a clustering of cases around 6 to 24. Um, about 8.8 percent of all the people who've received the vaccine are between those ages, and about 53 percent of the reports of pericarditis, myocarditis that the FDA has received uh, have been in that age group. So there does appear to be a clustering of cases in that age group. Most of the cases are mild and self-limiting. They've been treated um, with corticosteroids and NSAIDs. There's a handful of people who've gotten more seriously ill and have been hospitalized with this condition. Um, but it needs to be looked at. Um, and the question is, what could be the uh, connection between the vaccine and these observations? Is the vaccine creating some kind of inflammatory state that's in, that is then leading to um, this inflammation? And if so, what is the, uh, what is the approach going to be? Um, I think at this point, the, the risk benefit still favors vaccination, certainly in this age group. That's what CDC and FDA have also affirmed. But if, in fact, you find uh, a link between uh, the, the vaccine and these cases of heart inflammation in younger patients, it could open questions like, do you formulate the vaccine at a lower dose, which is all, already being done um, for much younger patients. So you want to you want to get to the bottom of this so you can try to come up with an approach that mitigates this potential risk. There is a preponderance also in men versus women. So it's about 80 20 um, in favor of men. So 80 percent of the cases have been in young boys versus and young men versus um, young women. So that's another observation that we need to take into consideration. I mean, with some of the other problems that we've seen with clotting to this point, it was women who, who were really facing the higher number of hurdles. And I think that was with the J&J &J, um, and, and some of the other, um, other vaccines that are based on that same adenovirus thing. What, what does that tell you? Is this something that could be related to having the disease itself? I mean, only because it was men who had more problems with coming down with COVID. Yeah, look, we see... Um pericarditis in a normal course. And we see it more in men from things like Coxsackie virus. So it's possible, and I'm not saying this is the case, it's possible that there's been, you know, some epidemic spread of Coxsackie or enterovirus or echovirus or other viruses that cause pericarditis um, around the same time that we were vaccinating younger Americans, that more younger Americans were getting vaccinated. They were also going out and about, and they were getting more common viruses that would cause echovirus. And we just happen to have a preponderance of this. That's one possibility. I'm not saying that that's the case. I think at this point you need to assume that there's a causal relationship between the vaccine and these observations until you can prove otherwise. But, you know, with the cases that we saw with the J&J &J vaccine, the AstraZeneca vaccine, that was what we believed to be an autoimmune effect. So the vaccine itself was triggering some kind of immune-mediated reaction that was causing those clotting disorders, was causing destruction of platelets. And we believe it was the vector, the viral vector that was being used to deliver the gene uh, construct that was in the vaccine, the, basically the vaccine construct in that case. In this case, these cases of pericarditis, we don't know what the relationship is. Is it an immune-mediated reaction from the vaccine, or is it just a general inflammatory response? We know the vaccine induces a an inflammatory response. That's why you get a fever. That's why you get injection site um, pain, because you're getting uh, your immune system stimulated. There's some reactogenicity just from the vaccine itself. So this, is this a more generalized um, inflammatory response from the vaccine that's localizing in the heart in some patients? Or is this something that's more direct where the vaccine itself is triggering some kind of very targeted immune reaction and it's manifesting in this way? We don't have the answer to these questions. These are still low numbers. And remember, even people who speculate that there must be more cases and we're just recognizing a small number of cases, that may be true. There may be more mild cases of pericarditis that we aren't recognizing, but we are probably capturing most of the severe cases. We do a pretty good job in this country of capturing what are likely severe adverse events, people who are getting very sick or might be hospitalized from this condition. And when you look at the number of people who are having severe cases of pericarditis, it's very small numbers right now. Most of these are very mild cases that are being picked up, some incidentally. What does pericarditis feel like? How would you know if you'd gotten the vaccine? What would it feel like? 
Yeah, I mean, a mild case is typically going to present with some some chest pain, some persistent chest pain that's positional. Um, it, it feels worse when you lean back versus lean forward, so it's a positional chest pain that's not necessarily reproducible. You can't reproduce it by rubbing your chest. So, you know, if someone has persistent chest pain, obviously they shouldn't have that at that age. They shouldn't have it at any age. If it seems to be positional, it changes its intensity as you move your position around. That's an indication in pericarditis uh, for a young person. I think you want to present to your doctor if you have any of those symptoms. In more severe cases, it's going to present with cardiovascular uh, manifestations. So, you know, if you develop pericarditis, you might develop restriction around the heart's outflow, and that's going to manifest itself with the kinds of signs and symptoms of heart failure. Those are very severe cases. There have been very few severe cases in this cohort that CDC and FDA are examining. Most, case, most people are presenting with the milder symptoms. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.